I'm not gonna lie, I've been tied to a fridge, stripped down naked and beat in a trap house for hours on end. I In today's video, we're venturing into the often overlooked reality of mental health and homelessness as seen through the eyes of a young man named Dove. Using an alias like many others did in this camp, Dove's story shines a light on the fears and concerns for safety and anonymity faced by those living here. If you don't feel a hint of paranoia in this environment, then I would have to say something's off because especially as an outsider, I felt it too. Delve into Dove's story, let me set the scene for you. To access this camp, you walk up a bunch of black rocks, you cross a set of train tracks at our local town, then you walk down a small ravine and descend into what some people might call a homeless camp, but I think more respectfully, you might consider it just a tent community. It's a place that feels like home and not really like home for a lot of its inhabitants, a mixture of safety and uncertainty. And as we make our way into this territory, you walk through narrow trails, small trees and encampments that are hidden from view. And I would say there was sort of like an eerie silence to the environment and just a weird unpredictability to it that always left me on edge. And I never really felt like I knew what was lurking around the corner. I brought some Gatorade snacks and matches with me as peace offerings, hoping to connect with someone, anyone who was willing to share their story. And that's when I met Dove, charismatic, welcoming, and talkative. He immediately put me at ease, giving me kind of a sense of belonging in a foreign land. And at just 24, Dove has experienced more hardships than most. He's lost his parents, he's lived in foster care, he's lived on the street, yet he remains extraordinarily resilient and strives to make a difference for others in his situation. Today we're going to see an honest and raw conversation that Dove and I had about his daily struggles, his battle with mental illness, and his lack of understanding and support that he's encountered throughout his life. I'm hoping that by the end of this video, you'll have kind of a new perspective on the lives of those grappling with mental health and homelessness. And just a forewarning, some of the, the content in this video you might find a little emotionally disturbing, so viewer discretion is advised. Uh, living situation right now, I'm out here on the streets, slash river, camping out. Uh, more or less, kind of sort of more by choice, because I'm trying to learn myself, because I'm only 24. And unfortunately, but fortunately for me, and I only say that bipolarly, because both my parents ended up, ended up passing on me back when I was real young. So, I, after, with that being said, I got forced into foster care. And because I didn't know my parents, I didn't quite know myself. So, me being out here on the streets and but I, I, I got to know myself a little more. Like be, I like trying to be a hero. I like trying to be an activist. I like trying to be an outgoer, outdoer, freaking someone that can make a difference because of my age. And it's one of those things. It's just become an ambition, something that drives me to set, be set apart from something that's stereotyped into something that can be uh, achieved. I wish more people would know more about how to condition mental illnesses and how to recognize them just off of body body posture and behavior and things that are said by someone that doesn't know about mental illness. Do you feel like you have a mental illness? Oh, I definitely know I do. I, 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 I can tell you that just because sometimes I'll be off by my own and I'll have like, I'll either be qu extremely quiet and like not saying shit to myself or anything or I'll be either really high and I'll be talkative to myself, having freaking full-on freaking third third party freaking conversations. Like, okay. I, it, it, it's, it's really interesting. If people knew more about mental illness, I feel like there'd be more programs in the community to get us more stable, at least with the right kind of therapy or right form of counseling and all that. And hopefully, like, uh, teaching skills on how to cope with that. Not just because I myself, 
I'm actually in a somewhat of a situation that helping my cousin. He's been through a little bit too much within one month, including a breakup with his girl that he knew for five years and uh, the loss of his dad. And because I lost my dad, I'm using what I know about that whole grieving process to help him out with his so he doesn't end up and fucking up and going down the wrong path. What's been most difficult for you living out here? Uh, I'd have to say some of the people and some of their outlook on life and all that and how they don't want to give a fuck. Sometimes people get high and drunk and or they get confused because of some of the shit people say. Like, like let's say he said, she said type stuff that ends up getting taken to the heart and then that ends up getting taken, by, taken out wrong by others and it's just not fair on people like me because I, I'm, I'm not gonna lie I've been tied to a fridge stripped down naked and beat in a trap house for hours on end I, I I've died a total of maybe about 12 to 15 times and I've come back I was about 20 roughly uh, I don't quite remember like I said I was beat with the, you know what baseball bat golf club freaking fish all, all kinds of shit this year I've, I've gone through a lot including having my jaw broken losing half my pinky do you mind if we if we see your hand real quick oh yeah yeah yeah, I can see it. Just hold still. Yeah, I, I lose your pinky. I ended up losing that bit of my pinky because a guy that was trying to be revengeful towards one of my other homies uh, was going to try to slice the dice at him with the machete at the soup kitchen, nonetheless. And uh, I, I wasn't having it because of how many people he was trying to swing at. A couple of them that I knew for a long time and a couple of them I actually had care for and love for and I wasn't gonna have it. So I threw a couple of rocks at the guy, uh, hoping to knock him out or freaking get him out. I, I get something, trying to disarm him. But then it didn't work, it backfired, but he came hacking and slashing at me, but after after he realized he cut, took my pinky, he took off. So no more hacking and slash. So I guess it was somewhat of a success, even though I've got to say it was somewhat of a downfall because since then I've I don't know if anyone knows what the blues are or fentanyl pills, but I got hooked on those thanks to the hospital. Fentanyl's no joke. It's addictive, it's killing, and it's not good. But good at the same time if you know how to moderate it. Uh, my future, it could be either bright or dim. It just it all depends on how I want to take it. But with that being said, I, I need to take it, everything I do into consideration for a better future. Uh, the one thing that I feel would make the biggest difference would be at least a tent if they don't got one. Because the weather can be bad and it's, or, or at least a safe place that they'd be able to have to set up a tent or, or set up a camp. and have that safe place be open and have therapist and shit on call if needed. It's one of those things that'd be like a program but without a program. It's just because of lack of understanding and knowing of why this person does what they do and all that. It's crazy because you can really learn and tell a lot about a person just off of how they set up their tent and their camp. It's kind of crazy. It's, it's interesting really. Uh, if you do drugs, do them safely. Always make sure you play it off with the buddy system on them. Let's say you're an IV using a user drugs like if you do heroin if you shoot up heroin make sure you have somebody there with narcan and if you do have a dnr make sure that is known at this point in our interview dove and i decided to take a break i hope after hearing his story you've gained some insight into the world of mental health and homelessness through his perspective it ain't always easy seeing what's happening in the shadows but everyone living down in this encampment has their own fears and concerns and they're just trying to get through the day like all of us it's apparent to me after hearing dove's story that he has quite the fighting spirit and he seems very resilient despite all the crap that life has thrown at him and i hope after hearing all of the hardships that he's been through that his resilience kind of can serve as some motivation for the rest of us thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next vid you're cool it goes on youtube people can see it yeah okay. yeah I'm, I, if i have to sign something i will fucking it, it, i like